That alone is something amazing. Look, that can change everything we know today. Just having a machine to produce artificial gravity. Because look, look at what that does. We know gravity, space, and time are all tied together. There are your shields, like on Star Trek, that you know deflect micrometeorites. There is your protection from radiation without heavy shielding. There is something that with an intense enough focused field, you can actually bend space. And there is something that can actually alter the flow of time. I mean, that's the missing piece of pie. Didn't they actually freeze a, a, a candle? A flame for yeah, you. now that's when it was connected to the gravity amplifiers where they could focus it. And uh, that they, was... They froze a candle? A yeah, they had a, they had a candle lit uh, to set it up for you. Um, again, there's a large... In the craft itself, there are three long pipes. Um, I'd say, uh, well, I don't know about... What's that? Three, four feet in diameter, maybe f five feet long. Um, anyway, they dangle the three of them at the bottom of the craft. These produce gravitational waves and they can focus them to a point or spread them apart. Those um, are what you call the wave guides? Yeah, okay. yeah. They're part of the uh, power source control mechanism and the uh, wave, well the wave guide is what I actually call the interlink between okay. them, but that, that's the gravitational engine. Um, they had one of those devices out along with the subsystem that connects it. So they can produce the power from the reactor, it runs the gravity amplifier, and they can focus and change the gravity beam that comes out of it. They took, a, they were, speaking of Barry, took a candle, put it close to the mouth of it, lit it, a normal flickering candle flame, and then activated the reactor. The gravity wave came out as expected, and the candle flame remained luminous and stopped moving. And which I mean, physics. Yeah, the, because the look, photons. if it's going to freeze it, the photon should stop being emitted. If it's going to you know, change the characteristics, look, how can the combustion continue to take place without the convection inside the flame? Because actually, the reason a flame is elongated is not, not really because of heat, it's because of gravity. Because gravity pulls down and, you know, convection moves flames upward. It's why in, in a zero gravity environment, flame is a ball, obviously. There's nothing to pull things around. But anyway, if, uh, look, if you negate the gravity around it, why is it still pointy? How can it still be making light? And why doesn't it move? Well, I mean, he, from what Barry said, it's not just gravity, but it's also time locked. You've they distorted froze a the frame of time. Yeah, they right? essentially froze a, a, a piece of time there. And I, you know, what do you say? I mean, you're, it's empirical evidence. You're looking at it. It's, it's not, it's not a, see it. it doesn't make sense that you could see it. And uh, yeah. look, it, it, the stuff I saw there was the most unbelievable, literally, because it, it, it defied what, what we knew as physics. And uh, at least I thought it did. And maybe what we knew was <laughs> a little incorrect and just needed viewing from a different angle. They finally did uh, synthesize element 115 that had the properties that I, that I stated. Um, not, um, But it wasn't stable. Yeah, it wasn't stable. Uh, now, each element has isotopes. For instance, you know, let's talk about hydrogen. We're all familiar with hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen has three isotopes. They're all hydrogen. There's hydrogen, protium, was the, be the technical name, deuterium and tritium. Well, tritium is a radioactive hydrogen. Uh, deuterium is another stable isotope of hydrogen, and regular protium, ordinary hydrogen, is the hydrogen we all know. They're all hydrogen. They have different amounts of neutrons in them. Um, they all have one proton, which makes them hydrogen. Now, this is a true for all elements. You can have the amount of protons in them determines what element it is. So element 115 has 115 protons in it. It's element 115. Now, depending on the number of neutrons it has, it will still be element 115, but it can be any number of isotopes of it. It's 115 undoubtedly has, you know, 
many isotopes of it. We've synthesized 115, we made one isotope, we have a radioactive one. Now they just need to continue on working with it. I mean, they made just a few atoms, but uh, we'll see what other isotopes they come up with. One of them, or more, is going to be stable, and it will have the exact properties that or, I said. Or could we make it, or does it have to be natural? As you speculated well, about that. Well, before. it's natural. It'd be difficult to find it. I, I do not think you can make that synthetically. It's just, it takes too much time. I mean, to make, you know, an ounce of it or even a gram would take a tremendous amount of time because not all the interactions are successful. I mean, you can bang particles together all day long and one may get stuck and then you've got an atom and how do you contain, you know, this single atom? So how do we get 500 pounds of it? Where'd that come from? Well, it, it, it had to either be uh, synthesized by the extraterrestrials that bought it in the first place or, you know, maybe there was a, a location where they came from where, look, this was a naturally occurring material. We know that all the material in the universe, essentially all the atoms of all elements, came from hydrogen. I mean, all you really need is, it, it is just atoms of hydrogen to make anything. Once they start collecting together large quantities of them, gravity just begins to push them together under their own weight. As long as you have enough hydrogen, that'll continue until they finally crush down and ignite and produce a fusion reaction. And that starts a star. Once the star is burning, it begins to produce helium by fusing, so now you have another new element. Well, this continues on until the star burns out, begins to collapse, and when you know large enough stars finally do, they crush down, produce supernovas, and then produce a whole host of every element on the periodic chart, far beyond what we're, the, <laughs> the numbers we're used to, beyond 115. And, you know, maybe some of these, that's where all the gold, all the uranium, every element you have ever come from, including every cell in your body, has come from supernovas. That's the factory that makes elements. So if there was a location somewhere else that had bigger stars, multiple stars, that burped out more heavy elements than, you know, our local system did, maybe this is common and you can find stable 115 like we mined for gold on, you know, on our planets or uranium. It just depends. If they were lucky enough to have exotic materials like that, I find that easier to believe than somebody built a machine to manufacture such a difficult material. So it's kind of sort of like a Rorschach test. Aha, they made 115. He was right. It really does exist. Somebody who doesn't want to believe it says, 115 doesn't behave anything like Bob Lazar said. It's sitting around in a pile of 500 pounds or something. Right? I mean, it's sort of like that. What is the... Right. You have to... I mean, you just have to start accumulating whether you believe it or not. And I personally, again, I prefer you don't believe it. <laughs> um, you know, just begin accumulating the facts that you can, you know, you can verify. And, um, and really be careful. But that drives them crazy. I mean, That's you need fine. to answer this. Now, I need an answer. How much? How many times do you get that in a, in a week still after all this Oh, time? I get, you I get, there isn't that. a day I, I don't get emails. And, you know, I try and get this across to them. Look, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. You know, well, I don't believe the story. Great, pass it around. <laughs> you know, I really don't want you to because it makes life difficult for me. I'm trying to do serious research. I'm, you know, I've got contract with governments and other companies for... R&D work and aside from, you know, other scientific interests, and I want this divorced. Look, if I went and did everything I can to prove my story and reached a tipping point for where people like Stanton Friedman and, you know, people uh, uh, along those lines um, said, you know what, this is beginning to look factual. Do you know how that would annihilate me? That would destroy my business. It would make it impossible for me to operate. And, you know, I'd have a continuous flow of questions, annoying people, I'm sure offers to do things that I am not the least bit interested in. Which is so, how it was for years. Yeah. It was for years, yeah. right? Look, I could have jumped on all that stuff. I could have, you know, at Area 51 sports drinks, and I could have been giving, look how many lectures. At one point I had, uh, what's that talk show host that... Uh, Oh, what's the guy's name? Which one? Rawlings, Suspenders. Montel. 
um, old guy I suspended. Larry King. Larry King. Yeah, he, I mean, I had an open invitation at one time for that show to come on. As the, you know, Geraldo, everybody, you know, I turned down everything. Monto Williams. I blew off movie scripts. I blew off all kinds of stuff because they couldn't stick to facts. Is there a part of you, though, that there's got to be part of you somewhere in there, even though it would be counterproductive. There's got to be part of you that wishes, God damn it, I, I know what happened. It's true. No, look, I know what happened. It's true. There's no doubt, period. There's, there's no delusion. And there are some things I can say that that will bolster the case, and I'm not going to. Um, it's going to stay that way. I do regret at this point bringing anything forward. Look, at the time, I'm in my early 20s. I went, you know what? This is a crime against the American people. This is just BS, and everybody deserves to know what's going on. You know, and 25 years goes by, you get a little older, and your priorities change. And, you know, what they told me is this is a security matter. And really, what's the public going to do without this? You know how reactionary they are. It's, there's a bunch of different reasons this is being kept quiet. Nothing that they'd bother telling me. But the bottom line is they're right. The bulk of the people are complete morons. And I'm sorry. Maybe they are right. And this really should just be, just be information that's handled out on a, on a need-to-know basis to some people where it would benefit them.